Welcome back to a new episode where we will be talking about how to include our CSS in our HTML. CSS is the most easiest programming language because I think it's, well, pretty similar to human language. Usually, CSS is written in a separate file with a .css extension. But there are actually multiple ways how you could add your CSS to your .html file. In between our body tags, let's write down h1, hit tab, and well, let's write down hello world in between. Save it, refresh the browser, and hello world just appeared on our screen. The first styling method that I want to show you is to go right above our well head closing tag. Let's write down style and hit tab. We can style it right in between our style opening and closing tag. The way you style elements in CSS is by writing down the element name. So in our case, it's h1, space. Then we need to write down an opening and closing curly bracket. If you open your curly bracket, the closing one will appear as well. So let's hit enter. And in between our opening and closing curly bracket, we need to define how we want to style the element. And there are lots of things that you actually can style or change. But right now, I want to keep it very simple and change the font size. In order to do that, we need to write down font, dash, size, colon, space. Now we need to define what the font size needs to be. And well, in our case, let's say 80 pixels. And every styling element needs to be close with a semicolon. So let's save it. Let's go back to the browser and let's refresh it. And well, you can see that the font size is quite big right now. So let's go back to our code editor. Let's change 80 to 60. And let's go one line below because we can also define the color. And that's by writing down color, colon, and well, let's say blue. And we need to end it with a semicolon as well. So let's save it, refresh the browser, and the color of Hello World just turned blue. What we also can do is to change the background color. So let's go back to the code editor and right below color, let's write down background dash color colon and well, let's say red. Let's save it, refresh the browser, and right here, you can see that the background color just turned red, but there is a white space above and well on the right and on the left. And this is called margin. And margin is used to create space around elements outside the defined borders. And right now the defined borders are where the background color stops. So well, yeah, everything around it. Luckily, CSS lets you control your margins. So let's go back to the code editor and below background color, let's write down margin, colon, and set it equal to zero. Save it, refresh the browser, and you can see that the, well, top of the color just disappeared. This was the first place where you could style elements. The next place is styling it right inside of the opening h1 tag. So inside our h1 tag, well, after the one, let's write down style, set it equal to double quotes. And right here inside the double quotes, we can style our h1 tag. So what I want to do now is to text align everything in the center. And this is done by the method text-align, which is mostly used to center elements, but you could also place elements to the left and to the right. So if we want to place it in the center, we need to write down center. Let's save it. Refresh the browser and hello world just appeared in the center. Let's go back and let's change it to right because the default is the left. Save it, refresh it and hello world just appeared on the right hand side of our screen. If we look at our index.html right now, you will probably say that this will be all right to have it well like this, the styling and the HTML in one document. But imagine working on a complex web application and having all your CSS, HTML, and probably JavaScript in the same file. What we normally do is to create a new file with the .css extension, which has all the styling inside of it. 
And what we want to do then is to refer in our index.html to our style sheet. So let's go to the left hand side of our screen and let's right click on our folder and let's create a new file inside of it. And the name that we want to give it is style.css. And you need to add the .css extension. So be aware that you don't forget that. You can also have multiple style sheets inside your website. And that's how I usually work as well. I have a global style sheet, so the style.css. I have a min.css, which has all the media queries of small devices of it. And I usually work with the max.css, which has all the media queries of iPads and tablets and so on. Because like I said before, I don't like to work in one long file because, well, it will get pretty cluttered. Now that we have created our style sheet, let's go back to our index.html. Let's copy our h1 tag. Well, we can also remove our style tags because we don't need it. And let's also remove the style inside the h1 element. Let's save it. Let's go to the style sheet and let's paste our h1 styling right here. And for the people that didn't follow my installing Atom and packages video, that's where we added a plugin that gives us the color behind the color that we're using. So let's save our style sheet as well. Let's go back to the browser and refresh it. And you can see that all our styling just has disappeared. Because what we're doing right now is, well, let's go to the style sheet. Well, we created a style sheet, but we're not referring to our style sheet and we're not saying that we want to use it, even though they are in the same folder. What we need to do in order for this to work is to link to it in our index.html. So right below our meta chart set, because we want to create a link that's not visible in the browser. So it needs to be in our head tag. Right below our meta chart set, we need to create an HTML element called link. And the link tag or element is a link between a document and an external resource. And our external resource is our style sheet. So let's write down less than link space rel and we need to set it equal to double quotes and inside the double quotes we need to write down style sheet because well we're linking to our style sheet. So after the double quotes we need to create another attribute and this is the location of the style sheet. So let's write down href, which stands for hyper reference, set it equal to double quotes. And inside the double quotes, we need to write down the path. And in the previous episode, we created a folder where we placed our images. And if we go back to the same folder, you can see that our style sheet and index.html are in the same place in our root folder. And since it's in the same location, we only need to write down style.css. We also need to close it with a greater than sign, and we don't need a closing element tag. So let's save it. Let's go back to the browser and refresh it. And you can see that the styling just appeared on our screen. In our style.css, we can add a bunch of stylings. But before we do that, we need to create more elements inside our index.html because we don't have that much to style. So right below our h1 tag, let's write down p, hit tab for a paragraph, and let's write down this is a paragraph. Save it, refresh the browser, and this is a paragraph just appeared. Let's go back to the style sheet and Right below our closing curly bracket, let's write down P, space, opening and closing curly brackets, and let's hit enter. First, I want to change the background color. So let's write down color, colon, set it equal to, well, I actually don't want to use the name. I want to use an RGB value. So let's write down hashtag 666, semicolon. And you can see that 666 stands for gray. So let's save it, refresh the browser, and our text just turned gray. 
I want to set the font size equal to 20 pixels. And I want to text align our paragraph to the center. Well, let's copy it and paste it in our H1 as well. Let's save it. Refresh the browser. And this is a paragraph just appeared in the center. The last thing that I want to show you is the inspect element in a browser. If you right click on our screen and well, we have an option called inspect. So let's click on it. And the inspect element is a pre-installed function inside your browser. So you don't need to download or install an add-on. And what we can do right here is, well, basically see all the website elements that we have. And you can do this for any website that you want. Because if we go back to the website of Airbnb and we inspect their website, you can see all the code that they've written for their website. But we don't want to focus on this right now because it might look pretty difficult. So let's close it and let's focus on our own project. You can also see the styling of the elements by clicking on them. While we haven't styled our body, but we can click on H1 and you can see the font size color, background color, the margin and the text align because that's what we applied. And everything on user agent style sheet is the default styling that elements have. So let's click on our body element. Well, you can actually see that an orange border just appeared on our screen. And this is called margin. And you can see it on the right hand side of my screen as well. We have margin, we have a border, and we have padding. But well, we don't have padding right now. But if we add padding, the color is green. And whatever is blue is the element itself. So our body is 964 pixels multiplied by 112. But what I actually want to do is to style my body element because I don't like the border around of it. So let's go back to the code editor. And I like to work in a logical order. So I want my body tag to be at the top. And right here, let's write down margin, colon, so that's equal to zero. Let's save it. Refresh the browser. And if we look at our screen right now, the white border around the red background just disappeared because we said margin equal to zero. And this can be done for every element because our paragraph element has a default margin as well. So let's go back. And let's go back in our paragraph styling and let's write down margin and set it equal to zero. Save it, refresh the browser, and we have no margin around our paragraph tag. This was it for this episode. In the next episode, I want to talk about comments in HTML and CSS. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.